to the local footy show where we can't get enough of the old VFA stuff, Benny, and you got some of it last week. Yes, down there at Waverley Blues, they put on a 50-year uh, reunion for the Waverley VFA Club. Try to Ago, fledgling VFA club Waverley defied the odds and won the 1965 grand final against the more fancy Port Melbourne. Saturday saw a reunion of that premiership team. What do you remember about that year? Oh, um, a year of possibilities turning into something absolutely brilliant because of a wonderful bunch of kids. In 64, Waverley uh, had only just managed to stay in the first division. In fact, the last game against Preston was a um, virtually a playoff for the place in the first division. Waverley won it. And Raven uh, were put out by the Victorian Football Association and um, we were given the opportunity because we finished second the year before. And uh, we went through that, that year uh, really ending up on the bottom of the ladder. Uh, but we were playing Preston and uh, on our wonderful surface wet ground. Um, and Don Scott, um, who was a magnificent guy and a great coach, uh, had been playing still with the reserves. And we brought him back into the senior side uh, to full forward. And uh, thank God we did because um, he just straightened out the forward line. He did an absolutely wonderful job. And we remained. We won that game and we remained in the, in the first division. And uh, I think the people of Waverley and started to uh, uh, realise that uh, we maybe had a future. And there were days of uh, Sunday afternoons um, uh, in Springvale Road when really it was a traffic jam. The cars just could not get in and there wasn't enough space to get into the ground. That, that was one of them, to have the citizens and people look after us like that. And did not make many changes from that season to the next. There were recruits, but it, it was very carefully done. It was as if the clubs uh, selectors sat down and said, well, all we really need is... Um, another half-back flanker or another rover or whatever the case may be. Nobody gave us a chance, uh, and that was special, uh, because uh, everybody thought we were walk easy to walk over. But uh, the kids, uh, as I call them, they're, they're men now, uh, and uh, yeah, they just had a wonderful spirit and a wonderful desire and a wonderful group of players who just wouldn't lay down. It was probably unexpected by people outside of the club. Port Melbourne had shown particularly good form in the first semi and the preliminary final, and beating Port Melbourne at Port was not an easy task at any time. Uh, but all credit to, uh, to Waverley, it was won uh, fairly and squarely, had quite a quite a sound team. Um, Alan Poor, for instance, the centre man, he won the Liston Trophy that year, won it again the next year. John Nation, a half forward flanker, he represented the VFA in a carnival the next year. It was a well-balanced team. It uh, was particularly strong across the half-back line. And I think the one, the one player who probably made uh, the most significant contribution was Vasil Valamos, the centre-half back. He played on Laurie Nithin, who was Port's captain and coach, and completely shut him out of the game. The previous week, in the preliminary final, Nithin had been best on the ground. He was absolutely brilliant, but he could not fire in the grand final, uh, largely because Valamos just didn't allow him to play the football. Alan Poole was just a, uh, a skilled player, um, not a fast player, a strong, tough player uh, who loved the challenge. And uh, he was disappointed. He was from Collingwood. He had a very bad accident, which hurt his uh, hips and back uh, in the early days there. Uh, and he hoped he could make it, but he couldn't. And so he came out to prove a point. And again, thank God he did, because, um, yeah, he just uh, was a wonderful, wonderful player as you don't win two distant trophies uh, end on end uh, if you haven't got some of those wonderful attributes. Uh, he most certainly had them, not only on the ground, but off the ground. There was three players that hadn't played VFL footy, and that was uh, myself, Carl Brewster and John Pesky. Everybody else had played a senior game of league footy or 
if not a senior game, they'd play VFL seconds for quite a while. And uh, yeah, it was just an amazing, it was an amazing aura. It's hard to explain. No one knows what it's like to play in a premiership side till you play in it. And I believe after you've played in a premiership side, if you ever get to a grand final, you'll hate to lose. When I was a 19 year old, I ran out onto the Port Melbourne ground. There was, uh, and I may exaggerate by one or two, but not many, there was 30,000 people at the ground. They were hanging from the rafters. My feet didn't touch the ground. Running out there as a 19 year old person, and uh, it was just phenomenal. We had to get over Dan and Ollie, who had knocked us off a number of times, and we did get over them, and then had to face up with Port at Port and nobody gave us any chance on their home ground. Um, but again, I keep saying, credit to this wonderful group of kids, uh, they just uh, wouldn't lay down and, uh, yeah, the way we went. And it was uh, funny because the first few games uh, in that 1965 year, uh, we were struggling. And I remember uh, somebody suggesting uh, that we have a, uh, a team meeting and, and try and bring everybody together. So. We went around the room and, and talked about nicknames. Um, and this was, uh, I, I can't remember all the nicknames that they came up with, except for one, which was a fellow by the name of Ronnie Rolfe who played on the halfback flank, and we got to him. And he said, look, I'd like to be called Bubbles. And it brought the house down. And so from then on, he was called Bubbles. Uh, and but, but that was the start, because the following week, uh, that spirit that they had sort of produced themselves uh, in team fellowship that went out onto the ground and um, you must start to not look back. It was, a, uh, it was one of Thurrow's tactical moves. It must have been a Melbourne thing because Dennis Jones was in on it and stuff like that. So what was your nickname, Doug? Apples. Apples or Yo-Yo, all depends, because I was, uh, that, in the 65 side it was Apples and 66, 67 it was Yo-Yo because I was in and out of the seniors to the second, so they reckon I was a bit of a Yo-Yo. VFA footy was pretty tough in those days. How did the blokes from Waverley handle themselves? <laughs> well, they never ever had any trouble. <laughs> Uh, no, they could stand their ground. Thoroughgood said to us at half time, when the fight starts, the whole 16 players on the ground have to be involved. I was the one that, uh, um, I don't know if I took a mark or got a free kick, but Laurie Miffin gave me a little bit of uh, you know, a backhand and um, I fell to the ground and Eldon Smith come in and Thoroughgood come in and the whole 16 of us was an all-in blue for a amount of time and I can't tell you the amount, but it was the turning point of the game. But we were told at half time, it wasn't if a fight starts, we were told when the fight starts, everybody's in on it. Try to remember the kind of Probably for about 10 or 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and there are other things that happened that, uh, yeah, in the celebrations and, uh, you know, drinking lots of lots of water and, and so on. <laughs> uh, yes, well, actually, it was held at uh, our cool store in Wontana South. And um, if people had seen High Street Road that night, they wouldn't have known what was happening because there was cars parked on both sides of the road. They were up our orchard and... Um, Probably the thing that I can remember, on the Monday it was the Wheeler's Hill Hotel, the Tuesday I'll say it was the Waverley RSL and it was the bowling club. Thorough actually got us into the Melbourne Men's Club in Swanson Street and that's where we met the Port Melbourne players and that was on about the Wednesday but for seven days straight we had um, a function of a daytime or of a night time but probably the the monday at the wheelers hill hotel with george dixon and his family and a lot of the supporters uh, i reckon that uh, george wouldn't have known how much money he took on that day although uh, i don't think the players paid for a beer all day it was a wonderful 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 time and to their credit, I mean, I was a bit concerned when it all settled down that they uh, they would um, get carried away and that was the end of it. But of course, the following year again, grand final uh, against Port Melbourne at the Junction Oval. Um, so they didn't slacken off. They enjoyed it and then got back to work, uh, but unfortunately didn't win that one. But never mind, they were there. That's the most important thing. When my shines are smiling.